science, I'm not very good at science. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm taking biology right now and I, I don't, I don't get any of it. So it's a big film, this film, just be like, uh, here's my, here's my uh, work. Free A, right? Like, come on. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I grew up watching Ghostbusters since I was like three or four years old. Uh, and my mom always showed it to me like every year. And I would always love it even more and more each year. Um, so I always, always loved the movie in general. Uh, and when I got it, I, I was stoked to, to actually have the opportunity. You know, I love it even more now, probably because I got to play with the gadgets. I think everybody would love it a little bit more if they could actually hold the, the movie proton pack and, and the Neutrono on and everything like that. So. Um, I've always loved the franchise and I always will. Did you get to keep the Aztec death whistle? Wish I could. I wish I could, but sadly I could not. Uh, maybe I could have stuffed it in my suitcase somewhere. I should have done that. Man. Mm. When I spoke to McKenna Grace once for Troop Zero, she told me this interesting story about how, like what her process is for developing character. She had a journal and she right. would pretty much write in that journal as if she's in character. Uh, is that something that you observed from her? And did you, what is your process? Yeah, um, when I get a script, uh, I like to, you know, read whatever character profile there is for me. And then when I say it, when I, when I read through the scripts, each time I want to do it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, I never want to fully memorize a script so I can always be directed around. I don't want to, to be like a robot per se or whatever. Uh, I really like to just go with the flow. And, and if I have a character that is, you know, kind of timid into themselves, like how I'm not normally like, um, I always try to just practice. And my mom's always there with me and reading through and gives me some tips. And it's very helpful. Well, what about, um, cause it's just, I'm curious, cause you know, your character's name podcast. And then when you have like really great lines about, uh, uh, here, listen to this. It really finds its voice at episode 46. It's right. Really curious. Like what, I wonder what those other episodes were like and what the Halloween episode would be about if he had the opportunity. To oh, do that. yes. Yeah. For my, we were envisioning what, what would it would look like to have the actual podcast. And um, me and McKenna, uh, we were actually going to try to do one with like uh, Finn and, and Celeste. We we're going to go and just ask them questions. Of course, it failed really badly because... <laughs> I know how to do a podcast correctly, but we were just talking about stuff like I want to do like Loch Ness Monster and, and, you know, famous urban legends just for fun to see, you know, just really get in my character. And that didn't really turn out, but I feel like he would be talking about more Loch Ness Monster and, and Illuminati stuff more on those other episodes. So has doing this film like uh, expanded your interest in the science as Paul Rudd's character says it's very punk rock? Um, <laughs> yes. I've always agreed with. Um, so how has this uh, caused you to, are you more involved with wanting to research the supernatural world or podcasts or in science itself as well? Well, it, researching podcasts, I guess, I really do like listening to podcasts. Um, science, I'm not very good at science. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm taking biology right now and I, I don't, I don't get any of it. So it's a just big film. This film, just be like, uh, here's my, here's my this uh, is work. Free A, right? Like, come yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, chemistry would be cool. I'm, I think I'm going to do that next year. So we'll, we'll see how I like that. What about, um, because of how this film feels like it's just exists in this space where uh, it borrows from the 50s. It's got a 50s vibe with the drive-up restaurant mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the old cars, which, you know, tugs at my heartstrings for growing up <laughs> on Ghostbusters. And, and the music, it's just like, it exists in this space where it just doesn't belong to any era, really. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, like, are, are you more into the analog uh, type of stuff now versus like what mo modern technology offers with the digital or are you like i want vhs tapes because they watch the players child yeah. Play. yeah i mean i've always loved i mean i had a um what's it called the the the, the camera what do you call that <laughs> the polaroid 
The Polaroid. Yeah. Yeah. My mom got me like a, one of those little Polaroid things. I, I carried it around and I just started taking pictures of stuff. It was so cool. Um, even if the pictures did not really look very good, it was still really awesome to see. Um, one of my friends has a record player and I've always wanted to go to his house and just kind of like put it on there and just see how it goes. Um, I've always loved old vintage stuff. You know, I grew up watching old eighties movies and, and to see all that stuff is it's just like a, like a dream to me. So I've always been interested in that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your favorite eighties movie? Oh, man. Um, I really like back to the future. I really like ghostbusters. Um, I've always been a huge action guy though. So mm-hmm. I'd probably say Terminator. That's a great one. To be exact. Sorry. Terminator two is my favorite as well. Is that even 80s though? Is that 90? 91? So That's 91. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so if we're talking about uh, Ghostbusters, then and I'm not just saying that because I'm in Ghostbusters, I'm saying that <laughs> like Ghostbusters. I, I'm curious what were some of the conversations like on set? I know, like, from a, probably like an acting standpoint, you're, you're focused on the character, you want to do the part right. But then part of you has to be kind of like nerding out a little bit where you just want to hear Jason Reitman and his dad having. Oh yeah, conversations with each other where you're just like, I, I kind of want to stop acting right now just so I can just admire them directing and uh, conversing with each other. And them collaborating together, uh, it was magical because they they just worked off each other. And and even if they had different opinions on something, they would always find like a a happy medium. I like to call it, uh, and it would just bring out a scene so well and and make them the scenes just that much better. I think it didn't really bring me out being like, Oh, I want to go see them and how they're doing, but I want to perform what they say uh, and to see how much better we can make the scene. Cause they always brought something to it. I know we're almost out of time, but I want to ask about the thrill of Ch- Chase and Muncher, which is a really terrific scene yeah. that we're in downtown. And uh, I don't think McKenna's looked cooler just coming out of the side of the <laughs> She really does look so awesome uh, doing that. And so, like, what, what was it like uh, you being in that that very intense situation, the chase, the thrill, the adventure of it all? There was, we did one stunt, actually. It was, like, my my first stunt, I like to call it. Uh, we, we go around the corner, and, you know, the car gets, like, sprayed by the, uh, the fire hydrant. Well, that scene where we go around, me and McKenna actually got to do it a few times, like, fully. I was strapped in so I don't fall out of the car and die. But McKenna was, was in her seat, and I, I think it was pretty scary to be out there. Uh, I was having a blast, though. We were going around the corner super fast. Um, and, you know, at that point, you're not really acting. It's, like, actually happening. So it was pretty scary, but it was really fun. So I love those scenes. Bring home Ghostbusters Afterlife. On Blu-ray and digital. <laughs>